All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachak Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and those of great millstone, and peace and citations to the elect. Okay, uh, I'm the brother Aina from GMS Dallas, and I got the elder Yasazak here with me. Uh, we're continuing on the series of Second Samuel, and uh, chapter 14 is uh, is going to be the the topic today. Uh, we went over chapter 13 last week, or last lesson, I'll say, and um, pretty much the whole situation with with uh, Tamar and and Amnon. Uh, you know, basically beginning those troubles that that David was going to be facing, uh, you know, after the the Bathsheba uh, uh, situation. So, uh, Lord willing, this is edifying. I know the uh, title says 13. We'll change the – actually, can we change the uh, – yeah, we'll change the title later. But it's chapter 14 we're going over today. All right? Oh, I put 15, what, I put 13? Yes, yeah, 13. But yeah, no, it's all good. It's so many, it's, it kind of gets redundant all the time, you know what I mean? But um, let me go ahead and share my screen real quick, and we'll get straight to it. Share screen. Okay. All right. My brother should be able to see that here. All right, so uh, we're going to start 2 Samuel 14 and 1. It says, now Joab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. Now, if you go back, let's go towards the tail end of chapter 13 real quick. All right, because chapter 13 was kind of like a longer chapter, but uh, we went over it in detail, the the situation, you know, uh, involving uh, Absalom, all right, Amnon and Tamar, right? All of these were David's children, okay? And so uh, basically you had Absalom kill, kill his brother, um, Amnon because of the you know the situation that that happened with his with his sister right and so um pretty much he fled after he ca after he had his his brother killed by his servants uh he fled to uh uh the land of uh of Geshur all right and so it said he abode there for three years and then it says, I'll read verse 39, 2 Samuel 13 and 39. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. So, so this uh, is a key verse to understand the next, the next chapter. Okay, because at the end of the day, uh, it was still, you know, uh, Absalom was still David's son, right? Even though uh, he murdered even though Absalom murdered his brother, right? Absalom murdered uh, uh, David's son, okay? It was still, you know, he still um, uh, yearned for, for his son, right? So that's what it means when it says the king's heart was toward Absalom, right? Just like you, you, would, you would want your son to, to be, uh, you know, in, in, in good graces with you and vice versa, okay? And so... Uh, this is what Joab did. It says in verse two, and Joab sent to Tekoa and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner and put on now mourning apparel and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead. So Joab came up with this plan to basically convince King David to uh to to basically bring Absalom back because Joab was a very loyal um he was a very loyal servant in in the sense of his mindset was protect King David at all costs right and even when it comes to he would you know he would even uh kill people do things outside of David's uh um commands just to protect you know from his perspective just to just to protect the king Right. So he set up this plan to have this woman come and basically act as if, you know, she was mourning. OK. And, you know, when you had uh, the way it was set up back then, you know, you had the, the matters, certain matters would be brought towards the king for him to judge. Right. Just like how when you uh, look at uh, King Solomon. All right. And how he discerned <clears throat> that situation with the, the uh, 
the you know the two mothers and the one baby right those were things that um basically what were judgments that were that were done okay and so it says in verse three and come to the king and speak on this manner unto him so joab put the words in her mouth so this is a lot of this chapter is narrative so right. there's going to be a lot of reading uh you know of course if, if precepts come up then so be it but a lot of this is going to be just kind of reading the situation all right so this is continuing on in uh in second samuel chapter 14 and verse 4 it says and when the woman of tekoa spake to the king she fell on she fell on her face to the ground and did obeisance and said help o king now i want to get that word obeisance real quick all right because this is this was a custom and when you read the uh the history you do pick up on a lot of customs that we that we did you know just by seeing uh people's mannerisms and and different things that they did so it means to uh oh let me get the hebrew word strong's h seventy eight twelve. it says shacha shacha and it means to uh to bow down okay uh to bow down to prostrate oneself uh before a superior in homage or before the most high in worship so on and so forth right so basically to to bow down right uh in order to to pay homage right so that was a you know like a respect thing all right the woman came in a, in a humble spirit but this was all you could say it was pretty much an act because again it says in verse three joab put the words in her mouth and these are the words that we're about to read these are the words that joab told her <clears throat> To say to the king and again it's important to stress that the reason why he did this is because he saw in verse one right he saw that the king's heart was towards absalom and with given the recent situation you know being that he pretty much uh absalom pretty much banished himself you know what i mean like he didn't see the king's face he didn't do that he he boom he killed he killed and he had amnon killed and then he dipped out you know what i'm saying for for a few years OK, so here you go. Verse verse five, it says, and the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman and mine husband is dead. Um, oh, by the way, footnote uh, Tekoa is um, the same uh, area that uh, Ho is it Hosea. Um, what, who was of the uh, uh, Amos? Yeah, the Amos, he was uh, of the herdmen of Tekoa. Okay. You go to Amos, the first chapter. All right. Uh, let's see here. It says, uh, verse 5, And the king said, said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and mine husband is dead. And thy handmaid had two sons, and they too strove together in the field. And there was none to part to part them, but the other smote the other and slew them. So again, we got to remember that Joab told this woman to go before the king and basically uh, act as if she had this this problem, this issue, right? So that the king could judge the matter, okay? And so she's acting as if you know she's she was a widow, okay, and that she had two sons and one of them. Uh, killed the other right basically she had two sons and both of them fought and one of them killed the other okay and it says in verse seven and behold the whole family is risen against thine handmaid and they said deliver him that smote his brother that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he slew okay so she's acting as if uh again her family was you know coming up and saying hey look bring the other son because the, the law says thou shalt not uh, murder, thou shalt not kill. So if you kill somebody, then then you're supposed to be uh, the avenger of blood is supposed to basically, you know, take that person out. OK. And she's and it says, and we will destroy the air also. And so shall they quench my coal, which is left and not leave to my husband, neither name nor remainder upon the earth. So again, she's coming to King David with this, uh, 
this fictitious situation basically to get him to judge a certain way, right? And so it says in verse 8, And the king said unto the woman, Go, go to thine house, and I will give charge concerning thee. Okay, so he said, he responded by saying, look, just go, just go home and then I'll, I'll send a messenger for you to, and tell you what to do, right? It says in verse nine, and the woman of Tekoa said unto the king, my Lord, O king, the iniquity be on me and on my father's house and the king in his throne be guiltless. And the king said, whosoever saith ought unto thee, bring him to, uh, to me and he shall not touch thee anymore okay now i want to pause there and uh get a little bit of the commentary oh gosh i got to start all the way from the top let's see if i can find it i didn't know it refreshed okay we in ruth we're getting close first samuel let me scroll down here second samuel all right here we go second samuel uh okay here we go second samuel and um we got this uh this chapter here okay it says joab apparently i'm not the chapter this paragraph joab joab apparently wanted to see some stability retor restored to the royal household with one man firmly recognized as their heir to the throne that man, in Joab's opinion, was Absalom. It says David made no attempt to bring Absalom back from exile because this would require him to sentence uh, him to death for murder. OK, so this kind of gives a little bit of a, a, a backdrop or it kind of expounds on the, the situation. Right. You know, because, you know, again, Joab, he pretty much was like, hey, look. You know, King David, he's starting to falter in his in his decisions and certain randomness is starting to happen. You know, he was like, all right, you know, the next person on the throne seems like Absalom, because when you read this chapter, it talks about how Absalom was the most handsome man in Israel and he had the long right. hair and he was a stud. Right. So it's like, OK, obviously this got to be the, the one that's going to inherit, you know, the throne. So Joab was looking carnally, which we know Absalom wasn't the one that ended up inheriting. He wasn't the, the son that ended up inheriting uh, the throne. OK, and I'm going to read a couple more sentences. It says, uh, Joab therefore laid a plan that would enable the king to bring Absalom back safely. He used a woman to win from the king a judgment that in certain circumstances, it was not wrong to show mercy to a murderer. It says the woman then used this principle that David uh, to, excuse me, the, the woman then used this principle to show that David should allow Absalom to return. Now, this is the parts that, uh, well, actually, I got, I got a precept come to mind. Um, uh, judgment. Mercy rejoices over judgment. Okay. Because that key part of the uh, of that sentence there, I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. The key part to, to take away from that is um, uh, he used a woman to win from the king a judgment that a, in certain cer certain circumstances, it was not wrong to show mercy to a murderer. So, basically, he's basically uh, using the principle of mercy, right? And saying, "Look, have mercy on your son." That was Joab's. That was Joab's position, right? Now, let's get this uh, scripture real quick. Judgment, man. Pops up. <laughs> Hold on. Why is it not popping up? Did I spell it wrong? Hold on. There we go. There we go. All right. This is uh, James chapter 2 and um, verse 13. Okay. 
Actually, I'll start at verse 10. It says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all, right? Which we know all of us are concluded under sin because none of us are spotless. Each and every one of us have committed some type of transgression of the law at one point or another in our lives to make us guilty of all, of guilty of transgressing, right? And so it says, For he that said, Do, do not commit adultery, said also do not kill now if thou commit commit no adultery yet if thou kill thou art become a transgressor of the law right it says so speak ye and and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty okay and that law of liberty is basically grace okay the grace period that we have to basically show that we truly uh, um, have turned back from those things that we've done once we come into the understanding of the sacrifice that we have now okay through the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made through his blood we understand that okay we turn away from those things that we did uh, in the old days because we know that if we continue on this path you know a uh, basically the Lord's going to deliver those men that that finished the race okay mm -hmm. of faith and now that's what this is talking about okay and here's the point in verse uh, 13 it says for he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy and mercy rejoiceth against judgment okay so since king david received mercy for committing adultery and committing murder okay um basically that that whole situation that that Joab um, set up for King David to judge, let David know that you know what, the Lord have mercy on me. You know, it's okay to have mercy on my son. And David didn't want to 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 kill Absalom. He knew that he knew that that was the only thing that that he could that he could really do. He would, didn't really have a choice to to put him to death because he. Um, he murdered according to the law. Yeah, yeah, according to the law. According to the law. Yeah, if he'd have brought him back, he would have had to kill him. He had to put him to death according to the law. So that's why he wasn't worried about him. You know what I'm saying? He was willing to let him. Just hope he find his way while he's after. You know what I'm saying? So if he do see him again, that it'll be in righteousness to where he could. You know what I'm saying? Recover from that. Shit. But you know, of course, the story goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. So, so that's, you know, so just kind of to give a backdrop, because I know we've been reading a lot and, you know, we may not have a whole, whole bunch of precepts, but just to understand, we want to take it slow and make sure that this is all making sense. Okay. Um, so it says back in second Samuel chapter 14 and um, where we at here, um, verse 10. And the king said, whosoever saith ought unto thee, bring him to me. And he shall not touch thee anymore. So David was saying, hey, look, if anybody, uh, you know, tries to say, well, hold on. Nah, who 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 said who said that you got the authority to, um, you know, prevent this from from happening? David was like, hey, look, let me talk to him and, and you're not going to get dealt with no more. All right. Nobody's going to nobody going to come come at you no more because David had he was the king. He had the ultimate authority. Right. So he had that mercy. OK, for that for that mother's sake. OK, uh, it says in verse 11, then said he, oh, excuse me, then said she, this is the woman. I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, that thou shouldest not suffer the revengers of blood to destroy any more. Lest they destroy my son. And she was saying, uh, and again, this is all. See, this is why you got to read the, the people try to skip, and you know, start at certain part, parts of the bible just open up the middle of the book and start reading yo man like if you don't understand the law and how the revengers of blood work matter of fact let's go to the cross reference real quick right i'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably in there okay uh let's see okay deuteronomy do do do, do. okay yeah six. okay deuteronomy yeah i think it's like what you say i said verse six yeah 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 i'm gonna just uh I'm going to just keep it right here. Okay. Um, actually, let me just, let me see what I'm going to talk about here. 
Cities of Refuge. Okay, this is a chapter that goes into that. Cities of Refuge. Okay, so this is Deuteronomy chapter 19 and uh, verse 4 it says, And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither, talking about the uh, cities of refuge, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past, as, okay, so this is, man, this is dope. When I first heard this, I was like, man, the Lord is deep. Like, he thought about everything, right. you know? Uh, so this is given a situation. This is in the law. Given a situation of, like, you know, an accident, basically, if you accidentally kill someone, which doesn't happen every day, right? But if, it, if that situation were to ever come up, okay, this is why when we go into the, the laws on, you know, the woman out in the field calling for help that was betrothed and this and that, like, this wasn't, this, these were just, these were not everyday situations, but if it ever came up, right, which is, it, it was in the law for a reason, right, then this is how you judge, okay? So uh, it says, whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past, as when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetcheth a stroke with the axe uh, to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the health, and lighteth upon his neighbor that he die, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live. So again, this is an example of and this, this verse five is an example of somebody basically, you know, accidentally killing somebody on accident. Like, and, and it doesn't happen every day. I know it sounds crazy. You accidentally kill somebody. But, you know, yeah, today, today they call it a uh, uh, involuntary manslaughter. See, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if it's an accident, then that's what they go with. You know, you got uh, what's the other one? You got uh voluntary manslaughter mm -hmm. that's a that's a little bit different you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying i don't know the full details on that one but i know do know involuntary manslaughter for example is if uh two men having a fight you know what i'm saying and uh the guy defending himself the guy defending himself hit the dude hard enough to where he kill him mm. you know what i'm saying you're just trying to get the dude up off you but you know what i'm saying when you hit him he fell back, hit his head on the curb, cracked his head open. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And your your intent, your intent was just to get him off you, but he ended up. It turned into all that. Mm -hmm. Is what this is going into. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, so this is an example of you know two men hewing down some wood, and you got you know the the uh, the handle of the axe. You know maybe it might be loose or whatever, and the and the head of that axe slip off. You know and randomly just so happened to randomly just and nothing's random but i'm using air quotations just so happened to to hit somebody crack somebody on top of the head to where they die which that would have been the lord's will you know what i mean to to kill somebody like that you know what i mean right. then, then then there was city uh set up basically as a uh a refuge cities of refuge right and then you and then it talks about the avenger of blood right verse six it says lest the avenger of blood which lest means uh, for fear of or to prevent, okay, uh, the the anger, uh, excuse me, the avenger of blood to pursue the slayer while his heart is hot and overtake him because the way is long and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. You see, so you don't just accidentally... Uh, you know, murder somebody, you intentionally murder somebody, you can kill somebody on accident, but murder is voluntary, right? Intentional, intentional, right? So, uh, and there's some other precepts on the, on the Avenger of blood thing, but you know, I just want to get that. Uh, so just to get some backdrop. All right. Um, so it says, uh, it's, it's six o'clock. Oh, oh, six, okay. It's six Oh three. Oh yeah. Yeah. Con, con. Yeah. We, we got time. We got, Got a whole another 30 plus minutes. Um, all right. So it says in verse 12, um, then the woman said, let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto the Lord, unto my Lord, the king. And he said, say on. Um, it says, and the woman said, wherefore, then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of the most high? For the king doeth speak this thing as uh, one which is faulty. Basically, she's basically challenging his his uh, 
decision to 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 say, hey, look, you know, the the you you know you're gonna you're gonna protect me from and my and my son from being uh, slain, right, by the avenger of blood, but you but you but you basically banished your son. You expelled you expelled him. If he come back, you you would kill him, right? You, according to the law. So she's saying that's why she said that the king do it, speak this thing as one which is faulty because she's basically saying, you know, try not to just blatantly call him a hypocrite. But she's like, well, you're judging one matter this way, but but the similar matter you judging differently. Right. And it says, uh, I'm going to continue this sentence for the king doeth speak this thing as one which is faulty and that the king doeth not fetch home again his banished. Right. Because, again, um, the reason the reason behind David not sending for Absalom, right, is because, again, he knew, according to the law, that, um, you know, you got to you got to put that person to death if if they slew somebody in their in their wrath and in their anger because of their hatred, which Absalom committed a cold blood. He committed a cold blood murder, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the, uh, the scriptures say the venge vengeance is the Lord is the Lord's man. You see, like just because, yeah, yeah. Then it was like two years after after the fact. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Plot, yeah. He plotted it. You know, what I'm yeah. Saying? That was first. Was it like first first degree murder? You, you got know? second, third, and first degree. First degree, he intentionally like was like, all right, look, I'm gonna go to my yeah, plan. plan. Yeah, we gonna have this. We gonna have this feast. We are gonna, you know, what I'm saying, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him drunk. You know what I mean? And uh, and then I'm gonna tell my servants. Go do this, and then, then he had the conspirators. Then, 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 uh, the, them uh, servants were guilty of second degree, or um, well, either first or second degree murder too, because they had a hand in it too. You know what I mean? So that's like the same shit niggas do. Absalom was doing. That's some. That's that shows you, man, that you know, <laughs> so-called Negroes. That's Judah, man, because Jake be scheming and plotting. You know what I mean? Iqua. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, so it says, um, so she was basically calling him out on it in a respectful way, just saying, just bringing it to his attention. This was all again, under the, the instruction of Joab, right? So it says in verse 14, uh, this is her speaking still, for we must needs die and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither do it the most high respect any person Yet doeth he devise means that uh, that his banished might not be expelled from him. OK, so when, when she says his banished, this is talking about Absalom. OK, and basically she's saying that the Lord is, you know, giving up, giving given the opportunity to basically pardon this situation. She's basically kind of kind of soothing him and by saying, look, don't you like I know that you worked up about it and this and that. You know what I mean? But, you know, the Lord is capable of mercy. You know what I mean? And you got to keep in mind, this was like uh, two or three years after the situation had had transpired. So this is like a total of like five years since, you know, the Amnon and Tamar situation. OK, uh, because, again, like you said, Zaquan, uh, he uh, Absalom waited about two years to, 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 to kill his brother and then another three years passed while he was in Geshur, okay? And so it says, um, verse 15, now therefore that I am come to speak of this thing unto my Lord the King, it is because the people have made me afraid and thine handmaid said, I will now speak unto the King and it may, and it may be that the King will perform uh, the request of his handmaid. So she, she, like we say that that was cap you know she that was basically a lie right there she pretty much um you know she pretty much didn't tell the king openly she didn't tell david openly that you know joab sent her you know what i'm saying she was like look the reason why i came to you is because you know uh i feared the people right and she was like look i'm gonna come and speak to the king okay and uh again this whole situation was fictitious OK, uh, so it says in verse 16, for the king will hear to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and my son together 
out of the inheritance of the Most High. Then thine handmaid said, the word of my Lord, the king shall now be comfortable as for an excuse me, for as an angel of the Most High, so is my Lord, the king to discern good and bad. Therefore, the Lord, Yahweh, thy power will be well with thee. So she was saying, look, you're so wise in judgment of, of being able to tell me what to do with my son. I think you should I think you should bring your son back. Right. <laughs> and, and, and so she had this grandiose speech. And then um, here's King David reply. It says, then the king answered and said unto the woman, hide not from me. I pray thee the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, let my Lord, the king now speak. So this is just basically saying, look, hey, man, I'm about to ask you a question. Don't lie to me. Be straight with me. And she's like, OK, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. All right. And then King David said in verse 19, and the king said, it is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this. And the woman answered and said, <laughs> and the woman answered and said, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my Lord, the king has spoken for thy servant, Joab, he bade me. And he put all these words in, in, in the mouth of thine handmaid. So she basically, she came clean when David asked her straight. And that shows you, you know, the, the level of discernment David had. He was like, man, Joab told you to say this shit, didn't you? Didn't he? And she was like, damn, yep, hey, you caught me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, that shows you. Joab, they, the, the Joab made me do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joab <laughs> made me do it, you know, so so she could go forth with no with no fear because you know it just was like hey look joab sent me like you know what i'm saying i didn't come here to mess with you like this is what joab said told me to do okay and uh and it says in verse 20 uh to this is her speaking again still to fetch about this form of speech hath thy servant joab done this thing basically meaning like you know the reason why joab made me come bring uh, come to you is because he wanted you to realize what you just said and, and, and come to the realization of the judgment that you just gave. It says, and my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of the most high to know all things that are in the earth. Right. So basically, that shows you that, you know, David, he, he was um, he was good at discerning. OK. And um, this is kind of like the second half of the chapter. All right. So, again, the whole reason why. Uh, before we go into it, the whole reason why uh, Absalom was not recalled up until this point was because he wasn't welcome back. You know what I mean? Like, basically, hey, if you killed your brother, you know, I got, I got to get, I got to get you up out of there. That was the, that was the spirit up until this point, right? So this was the turning point in, uh, in this, in the scenario. All right, so it says. Second Samuel 14 and one. And the king said unto Joab, behold, now I have done this thing and go, therefore, and bring the young man Absalom again. So now this is officially King David telling Joab, all right, look, I'm not going to put him to death. You know, what I'm saying according to your request, you know what I mean? Indirect request. You know, you write, I'll have mercy on him. You can he can come back into Israel, right? Come back to his house and his possessions, right? So it says in verse 22, and Joab fell, uh, fell to the ground on his face and bowed himself, right? He did obeisance. Okay, it says, and thanked the king. And Joab said, Today thy servant knoweth that I have found grace in thy sight. Now, this still this shows you that Joab, he was still loyal to King David. He just wanted to basically perpetuate who he thought was going to be the heir of the throne. Okay. And so he was happy that Joab was happy that King David changed his mind and, and, and basically let, you know, Absalom back in and forgave him for what he did. Okay. It says, uh, my Lord, O King, uh, in that the King had fulfilled the request of that of his servant. All right. So it says in verse 23, let me check make sure we don't have any precepts. Let's see what we got. Okay, we got some precepts. We got some precepts. Okay. Oh, James. Okay, the water. 
Uh, oh yeah. Yep. You could say you could also say low hold on the altar. Okay, okay, we'll get this one. Romans, Romans twelve and nineteen, real quick. Uh, let me hide this. It says uh, Romans twelve and nineteen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith he, how about Shemiel Shai. So, right. So, that's part of the law, man. You see? Right. And, and King David, they're here today. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. Joab wanted uh, Joab, uh, Joab wanted them to get rid of Absalom. He was like, look, man. As, you know what I'm saying? David, David had his stance on it. Joab had his. You know? And the Lord did play it out. You know what I'm saying? His, in, his vengeance ended up playing out on Absalom for what he did through Joab. You know what I'm right. saying? Let you know that the Lord is no respect to a person. The Lord knew how much David loved Joab. I mean, the Lord knew how much uh, David loved Absalom. He knew mm -hmm. how he knew the dynamics of those relationships. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And yeah. Absalom deserved to die for what he did. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. him putting the spirit on Joab to do it, and David had to just deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Kind. That's right. Kind. So let's go back to here. Second Samuel, the water for the precepts. Okay. All right. So you can see <laughs> Joab was happy, right? Second uh, Samuel uh, 14 and 23. So Joab arose and went to get uh, Gesher and brought Absalom to, to Jerusalem. So he brought him back to the same city where, you know, where his father was. Okay. Uh, and it says in verse 24, and the king said, let him turn to his own house and let him and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and saw not the king's face. So, you know, basically, uh, David allowed uh, Absalom to come back into the city. Okay, but he was like, look, I don't want to, you know, I don't need to talk to him. I'm good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not good, but basically, like, don't even bring him. Don't even bring him here. Like, he knows what he did. You know what I mean? Like, when you when you betray a man, you know what I mean? And, or, you be, or you feel betrayed, I'll say, by a man, you don't even want to you know, it's certain things just like you don't even want to to that level, like somebody killed your son. And it was I mean, it was your own son that did it. But, you know, that's a really that's a really a really heavy situation. Right. So David was like, look, it's sufficient enough that I spared his life and I let him back into the city. We don't need to talk right now. You know what I mean? So and that was the command. That was the you know, the command that went out. So uh Absalom rebellious ass you know <laughs> that he rebelled against that order okay but um continuing on in verse 25 it says but in all Israel there was none to be such praised as Absalom for his beauty so <laughs> so you see you know he was the, the the most GQ handsomest Israelite on the face of the earth all right according to the scriptures yeah, he, he was the Don Dada yeah you know you know, the perfect, the perfect, you know, physique or whatever you want to think of. Right. It says from the sole of his foot, <laughs> even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. Right. So you would be like, you might think to yourself, why would the Lord make? Because uh, if you know anything about Absalom, you pretty much know he's a, uh, a rebellious uh, scumbag, which if you if you don't, we're going to get into it, you know. In the next lessons okay uh but you should know about absalom okay because uh basically that that physical you know uh <laughs> the physical appearance that he had you know that can get that can get to your head man that can get that can get you thinking pridefully you know what i mean that can get you thinking that you're above certain in individuals because you know the, you know because you got you you know you got uh, certain physical features Right. But the scriptures say what the Lord looks not on the outward appearance, but on the inward man. OK, so that kind of you could say probably was like a stumbling block to Absalom because he was like, man, I'm the son of the king, man. You know, I'm, I'm the I'm the most, you know, handsomest of them all. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Looking ass. Right. So it says uh, verse 26. And when he pulled his head, which means to cut when he pulled his head for it was at every year's. Excuse me, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it because the hair was heavy on him. 
Therefore, he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. Now, I didn't look it up. Uh, let's see if they have anything on the 200 shekels. Okay. Let's see what the yeah. NIV say. I'm going to see what the NIV yeah. say. Yeah. Two, two and a half pounds. Uh, this is uh, 2 Samuel 14 and 26. So, yeah, it says um, basically 12 pounds. It's probably the king's shekel was the, 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 the half of an ounce to okay four four out four four pounds and two ounces or three pounds okay that's a lot of her yeah 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 okay yeah yeah so yeah you know he cut his hair once a year i mean shit y'all brother yeah y'all brother seen i had I, I had grew up grew my hair out for a year you can see how fast your hair grow out in a oh. year you know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, you know, maybe a, a few pounds, you could say, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're far removed from these, from these weights that are used because even in the commentary, you know, you can see it got different measurements of shekels and stuff like that. So anyway, we just know he, he cut his hair once a year. Okay. Yeah. And um, basically, so, you know, we had the, you know, like how the, how the Instagram niggas be like, you know, they got the, they got the, they got the curly, like, you know, the nice little hair. You know what I'm saying? Or I had I had like the you know the little mini fro at one point. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know, girls like you know, brothers that have ever had, you know, actually grew their hair past a certain point, you know, girls they you know they like they like niggas with hair and stuff, you know what I mean? But uh anyway, just you know, trying to bring uh, life to it, you know. <laughs> Second Samuel, yeah, 1426. It said uh it said he cut his hair only once a year. And then only because it was so heavy. Hmm. When he weighed it out, it came to five pounds. Yeah. 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 So that's that's a lot of hair, man. I mean, shoot. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I'm just speaking from experience. When I cut my hair uh, after several months of growing it, like I cut it in, in my bathroom. So it was like a like a nice pile of hair, like in my in my sink. You know what I mean? So, it, you know what I mean? Maybe it could have weighed a couple pounds, you know? No, no. When I was in high school, I graduated. Uh, let me see. I, uh, let me see. When I graduated, when I graduated, I grew my hair for like seven, probably seven, eight years after I graduated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the time I, the, the, the haircut I got, the last haircut I got for graduation, I didn't get no more haircuts until like seven, eight years later. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when I tell you my hair was this damn big, you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> when I when I finally cut it off, yeah. When I finally cut it off, uh, yeah. When I finally cut it off, I think I was able to fill up a trash bag. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> one, of those, not, not, uh, one of those uh, like the, the waste basket in the uh, the waste basket in the classroom and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was able to I was able to fill up a trash bag, so that was, that probably weighed about a good two or three pounds. Yep. But they say his he it was like that every year. Yeah, yeah. So, so his hair was growing way faster than I was. Yeah, kind. Hey, hey, hey show the soldier you how you how much I said a jawline, nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, a fucking uh Trey songs, goddamn oh, handsome squid we're looking at, nigga, man. man. You know, but hey, you know it is what it is, right? So, uh, <laughs> but that shows you that hey, nothing is new under the sun, man. You know, you had you always had them guys, man. Like, you know. Um, the uh, what's that dude in uh, the in uh, in Shrek two the the prince that was trying to marry Fiona? I can't remember the name of the, the you know that handsome ass prince or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, you know? I can't either. But I you, you, you know, you know, y'all are talking about. But yeah, yeah. y'all yeah. right? <laughs> so uh, so it says in verse twenty seven, uh, and unto Absalom there were born three sons, and one uh, and one daughter whose name was Tamar, okay, uh, she was a woman of, of, of a fair countenance. Now, uh, he basically named his daughter after, after Tamar, right, after his sister. He named, you know, his daughter after his sister, right? And she was pretty, right? So it says, um, verse 28, so Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. So now you have two years from uh 
Amnon and Tamar, plus three three more years. So that's five years. So seven years really from chapter 13, which is the previous chapter, up until this point where we're reading right now. So that shows you how, you know, time time goes, man. In the Bible, it can it can skip. Okay. It says, uh, therefore Absalom sent for Joab. Uh it says, therefore Absalom sent for Joab to have him to have sent him to the king, but he would not uh, come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. So, you know, basically uh, Absalom was like, yo, hey, Absalom. Uh, Absalom was like basically reaching out to to Joab saying, hey, look, you brought me from you brought me from from Gesher. Why the hell I can't talk to my father? I thought I was good. Right. And, and basically, Joab didn't even Joab didn't even come to him. So Absalom felt like he wasn't getting enough respect. Right. So Absalom being a nigga, this is what he did. It says, therefore, he said unto his servants, OK, uh, see, Joab's field is near mine and he hath barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. So he literally Absalom pretty much just had his servants set Joab's field on fire just to just to get him to just to get, get a conversation attention. with him, just yeah. to get his attention. Right. That's that's niggerish, man. You know what I mean? So uh, it says verse 31. See, because, you know, that's man, that's some that's that shows you, man. This, the Bible shows you how to act and how not to act, man. You know what I mean? Like here it is. Absalom, he was receiving mercy. He was allowed to come back into his house, have his woman, right. and this, you know, his possessions. And, and I, that wasn't enough for him. Right. He was entitled. You see, he felt overly entitled. So it says, verse 31, then Joab arose and came to Absalom unto his house and said unto him, wherefore have thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, uh, behold. I send unto thee, excuse me, I sent unto thee, saying, Come hither, that I may send thee to the king, to say, Wherefore am I come from Gesher? It had been good for me to have been there still. Now, therefore, let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. Right? So the whole uh, proposition of, of Absalom was like, Look, you know, you, 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 pet you petitioned to have me brought from Gesher. And I ain't even able to see my father to talk about, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, like I've been here two years. You know what I'm saying? This is this was Absalom's point. He was like, look, I've been here two years. You know what I mean? I sent for you twice. You just ignored me. So yeah, I set your shit on fire, Joab. <laughs> <laughs> so this dude was wild, man. Absalom was crazy, right? It says, and he was like, look, if there's anything, you know, that I've done that's worthy of death, let me be put to death. Let, 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 let him kill me. You know what I'm saying? You know, Absalom was like, hey, well, yo, Joab, you're so scared for me to get put to death. If, if I've done anything worthy of being put to death, then let the king kill me. Right. And that was Joab's, you know, fear. He was like, look, you know, like, hey, the king specifically requested not to see your face. Right. So he was at that conflict. So but this is what happened. So he went to the king. Right. Verse 33. Uh Last verse in the chapter says, so Joab came to the king and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. So there you have that whole situation, chapters uh, 13 and now this chapter 14 of this crazy fiasco that uh, that, um, you know, Absalom had caused. Right. Because obviously the Amnon and the Tamar situation, that was outside of Absalom's control. OK, but he couldn't let it be there. He could he couldn't just let it. He couldn't let the Lord work. Right. They said you can't leave well enough alone. Yeah. Yeah. I know Texas brothers got the, the, um, the, <laughs> the metaphors down the water. Yeah. He couldn't leave well enough alone. You know what I mean? And just, you know, chill. He had to take shit into his own hands. And now all this craziness and now he's you know you know a, a dead brother and a burnt up field later and, and and seven years later now he's finally or five years later now he's finally 
uh, back in the good graces, you know, you could say with, with, his, with his father, okay, because when it said the king kissed Absalom, that's basically a custom because, you know, uh, there was something recent going on, people talking about the kissing thing. That was a custom. It wasn't on the lips, okay, it was on the cheek or whatever, you know, basically um, showing that that acceptance, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and really that's it. Let me see if the uh, commentary has anything else to say to it. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this here. Oh, we got a precept. Prince Charm, yeah, the water, brother. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's get this uh, real quick. Romans 14, or excuse me, 15 and 4. Uh, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yeah, because you can draw a lot of um, uh, connections to, you know, similar situations. And this is the importance of the history being in the Bible. So that way you know how to judge. You know what I mean? Like even when we read uh, in a chapter of Bathsheba, David referenced the history of something that happened in Judges about a war tactic of not coming near a wall. You know what I'm saying? When you're besieging it, not to come up right directly up underneath the wall to where somebody can just throw a stone on their head. You know, like that's just a small example. But, you know, for some reason, our people, we just, you know, we don't really get into the history like that. Um, and not even just talking about this, just even just the, the prophecies and, and and everything in general. You got to understand, uh, you know, the way that the that everything was running back then to really fully grasp the, the prophecies, man. So um, the one for that. Uh, let me just finish off here with this. Uh, so another, another thing you take from this, man, your kids ain't going to be all your kids ain't going to be in the truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because you just because you in the truth uh, trying to walk around this path don't mean your kids going to do that. You know what I'm saying? They got to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, too. So, you know, we, 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 we've we had Cal I say, uh, what was that? Uh, Eli kids was out of pocket. David had some kids out of pocket. You know what I'm saying? You got you got men that's considered righteous in the eyes of the Heavenly Father who kids was terrible. Right. You know, and, and it is what it is. So mm -hmm. when 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 Yahweh said those uh that can't forsake mother or father or family or children or all those different things, you're not worthy to be my disciple. You know what I'm saying? You start to see those things play out. Because by the time Yahweh hit the scene as Yahweh, you know what I'm saying? He knew all the history and all that and and and, and, and how those behaviors can affect us. You know? Yep. So that's another thing, you know, if, 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 if all you can do, I'll say the best you can do is pray for your family and leave it in the Lord's hands, mm -hmm. you know, but don't be surprised. I would say, don't be surprised if you have a way with child, you know what I'm saying? It just is mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, that's why the scriptures say train up a child in the way, uh, when he is young, you know, in, in the way that yep. he should go. And then you also got the curses yep. to where they ain't going to be trying to hurt none of that. Mm-hmm. And, yep. that separa and that separation and that, and that detachment is going to be there, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, hey, it is what it is, you know? If, if, if the situation is cool and you got a good situation, that's cool. But if the situation is rocky and all jacked up, you got to be able to accept that too, you know? Con, I want to get some of this, uh, and, and really th this will be it after after I read this commentary. Uh, that'll be all I got, but it does have some good, some good stuff on here. Um, Going to Bridgeway commentary, last two chapters of this uh, section here, underneath David's uh, family troubles begin. It says, uh, although David realized that he had been tricked by Joab into making this judgment, he stuck to his decision and allowed Absalom to return. However, he did not allow Absalom to enter into the into the royal court. In this way, he showed for, because because Jerusalem wasn't just like a you know, a uh, one square mile, you know, or, you know, a half, half a square mile uh, a city. Okay. It was, it was pretty big and it had sections, right? You had, you know, the Royal court, which was the King's residence. Right. And so, and then you had, you know, other, uh, you know, other residences along it, regular, you know, regular citizens would live, you know, outside of the Royal, the Royal court. So it says, 
let's see here. Du, 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 du. Uh, oh, right. It says in this way, he showed firstly that he had not forgiven his son. And secondly, that he did not consider Absalom a suitable person to succeed him as king. OK, so it doesn't explicitly say that in the, you know, in, you know, in the in the chapter, but you can extrapolate and see, hey, look, you know, this isn't this isn't something that uh, David uh, that he backed up. This isn't something that he uh, basically stood for. Right. He didn't like the fact that Absalom did that. It says whatever David's opinion of Absalom might have been, the people in general were impressed by his handsome appearance. He was also ambitious and was becoming impatient for power. He had spent three years in exile and another two years back in Jerusalem, yet he still had not been accepted by the king. Right. And, you know, yeah, we watched him. he felt entitled. Mm -hmm. But I killed, I, I, was, I know I murdered my brother, but he buried my sister. So I had right. to do something. Right. You know, yep. he felt, he felt, he felt justified in that act. Okay. Well, you feel justified in that act. Well, according to the law, you're supposed to be out of there too. Mm -hmm. And you think you're supposed to be king? Like, right. what are you doing? Right. Are you serious? Yep. You better be glad I let you back in Jerusalem. Yep. Go ahead. Yep, exactly. It says he decided that he would wait no longer, talking about Absalom. When Joab showed an unwillingness to give him further help, he persuaded Joab to take notice of him by burning Joab's fields. Without delay, Joab arranged for him to meet the king with the result that received the king's pardon. His fierce ambition had at last brought him back into the royal court. Okay, so this is why when we read about, you know, Joab's uh, legacy that he left on the earth, okay, I'm sorry, not Joab, I meant to say Absalom, when we read about Absalom and the legacy that he left on the earth and the way that he went out, we see the the events that led up to that was basically uh, Absalom being a badass kid and then his father ending up pardoning him. OK, and and that's pretty much, you know, the the uh, ingredients that led to the events that we're going to get into, uh, Lord willing, and, you know, in the next lesson. So that was all I had. Uh Zaquan, did you have any other points? Okay. Just, uh, I would say when you when you go back and read these stories, man, you you, you see you see what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the laws start to come into play, mercy start to come into play, judgment start to come into play. You see, and all these different things that we talk about in the scriptures, you start to see them play out. You know, but you gotta be you gotta go back into the history to be able to see that. You know what I'm saying? Kind. Say badass kids. I would say badass kids didn't start with GMOs. No, no, no. They've been badass kids on the planet. Yep. You know. That's right. Yeah. I don't got nothing else. Okay, kind. Hey, well, hey, uh, Lord willing, this is an edifying lesson. Abaratiza. Uh, with that, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakudash, the Bonner City Apostles, and Elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.